billion dollar private companies are stampeding to go public. But fear, not excitement, may be driving the stampede. After a slow first quarter for public offerings, IPOs gain momentum with the debut of giant Levi Strauss, followed by Lyft. Next up will likely be Uber and Pinterest. But a re-energized euphoric IPO market is not necessarily a bullish sign, according to some industry experts. It could indicate Private investors in these companies want to cash in their chips. Now, that is just the IPO market. The broader market is also showing signs of euphoria. So, let's take a look. In general, the market seems to be showing other signs of euphoria, including the spectacular rise in the market from the late December 2018 lows. But let's discuss other kinds of euphoria that are appearing in the overall market and economy. Back during the dot-com era, investors were making huge assumptions about the prospects for growth in corporate sales and earnings. For most of the dot-com companies, it never materialized. It is a bit different with investors making overly optimistic assumptions about the sustainability of corporate profit margins and valuations. Currently, although earnings-based valuation measures show the stock market is expensive, the overvaluation does not appear to be extreme. However, the problem is that investors are banking on earnings-based measures like the price-to-earnings ratio and are assuming that corporate margins will at least maintain the current record highs into the future. So while we view this chart here from the Felder Report, consider what would happen if profit margins were to revert back to their historical averages. And here's how that works. Trailing earnings for the S&P 500 are currently about $130 using a 15 multiple, which is in line with long-term historical averages, you get a price of about 1950 for the S&P 500, or about 33% below the current level of 2900. That would be bad. However, if profit margins were to fall from about 13.5% today to about, say, 10%, earnings would fall to about $96. Put a 15 multiple on that, and you're looking at just over 1400 for the S&P 500. That's about 50% below the current level. Ouch. Remember, stocks are not the only components that have cycles. So assuming that profit margins don't also have cycles is a big mistake. Right now, there are various factors turning against corporate profit margins. So while looking at this chart, consider this quote from Warren Buffett. And it reads, In my opinion, you have to be wildly optimistic to believe that corporate profits as a percent of GDP can, for any sustained period, hold much above 6%. One thing keeping the percentage down will be competition, which is alive and well. In addition, there's a public policy point. If corporate investors, in aggregate, are going to eat an ever-growing portion of the American economic pie, some other group, will have to settle for a smaller portion. That would justifiably raise political problems. And in my view, a major re-slicing of the pie just isn't going to happen. Now, that quote from Warren Buffett was from 20 years ago. Given today's stock market level and the level of political discord, I think it's a pretty prophetic statement. And lastly, in a recent interview... Lori Calvacina, head of U.S. Equity Strategy for RBC Capital Markets, stated that she's getting a bit worried there may be a little too much euphoria around the S&P 500 right now. Calvacina has been following weekly U.S. Equity Futures reports provided by the U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission. This data is viewed as a measure of sentiment of how hedge funds and institutional investors are positioning in the U.S. equity markets. According to Calvacina, the data, when you bake it all together, is starting to show the positioning in U.S. equity futures is parabolic, shooting straight up. It isn't back to levels in January or September of last year, 
but it is starting to move up very rapidly as shown in this chart here. And this current spike is nearing the levels last seen in January and September of 2018, right before the market downturns during those periods. Further back, these levels coincide with the market peaks in 2007 and 2015. This all indicates to Calvacina that there is not much more room for the S&P 500 to run. So for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.